ahead and get started. Good afternoon and welcome to today's final panel, um, Cracking the Seamless Integration Code to Improve Outcomes. My name is Natalie Friedman. I'm the Director of Patient Engagement Programs here with Get Well Network. Um, during today's sessions, our, or session, our presenters from OSF Healthcare and Inception Health um, will share their experiences on integrations with our product line, Get Well Loop. We will learn how these healthcare systems have cracked the code um, by maximizing their integration. We'll also hear how they are taking patient connectivity a step further by engaging patients at the most appropriate time on their care journey. Their results include better outcomes, improved workflow and efficiency, as well as fewer readmissions. After hearing from our presenters, I will open up the floor to you all to ask questions and share your experiences with integrating GetWell Network. With your participation, this session will provide a great opportunity to exchange ideas and best practices. It is my pleasure to begin this afternoon's presentation by introducing our presenters. Natalie Mortensen um, is a manager at Inception Health, the hub for digital health and innovation for the Fraud Art and Medical College of Wisconsin Health System. As a member of the system for over 11 years, Natalie has background in labor and delivery, ambulatory primary care and specialty services, clinical integration, clinical informatics, and digital health. She received her BSN from Marquette uh, University and recently completed her nurse executive MSN with Chamberlain University. Rob Janetten is the Director of Innovation Partnerships at OSF Healthcare, headquartered in Peoria, Illinois. Rob's 20 years of experience in the healthcare industry include an extensive background in performance improvement, change management, medical simulation and education, and usability studies. Rob currently leads OSF's external innovation efforts by partnering with healthcare innovators to bring new ideas and solutions into the OSF ministry, um, addressing the cost and quality of the care as well as the experiences created for both patients and providers. Before we get started, I'm sure you guys have heard this a thousand times already, but I need to share a disclosure statement with you related to nursing education credits that are being offered for this session. The Maryland Nurses Association is an accredited approver of continuing nursing education by the American Nurses Credentialing Center's Commission on Accreditation. If you wish to receive credit for attending this activity, you must complete the session survey found on your conference mobile app. In the survey, it is important that you check the box indicating that you would like to receive credit and enter your full name and email address in the space provided. Your certificate will be sent to that email address. In compliance with the continuing education activity credit conflict of interest disclosure requirements, we'd like to announce that the presenters of this session have no commercial association that would create a conflict of interest. Natalie will kick off our session today, so welcome. Thank you. Can you guys hear me in the back? Hey, Darren, can you hear me in the back? <laughs> We're good? All right, well, thank you so much. I know it's hard being one of the later presentations on the second day, so I appreciate that you guys are still here and willing to, to listen to us talk today. Um, so really, we're gonna talk about cracking the seamless integration code. Um, again, I'm Natalie Mortensen. I'm the manager with Inception Health, which is actually a part of um, Freighter, the Medical College of Wisconsin. You were so close on Freighter. It's so hard to say, I know. No, you got A for effort. Um, I do just want to disclose that Inception is an investor in both Avia and Zelf, who I will speak of today. Um, so just so you're aware of that, I want to make sure I'm on the right slide. And then also just some learning objectives for today. Um, I really want to help you guys try to identify some of the integration gaps within your current organization. I'm pretty sure that throughout the past couple of days and other presentations, you've probably already identified some of those, but hopefully today we might be able to shed a little bit more light on maybe some gaps and opportunity areas for you. Um, additionally, apply strategies to implement and scale a digital tool across your health system. So some of you may be in the process of that, but again, hopefully some of what we can share today will assist you in your efforts. And then also discuss methods of implementation that assist with integration and end user buy-in. So with that, Freighter at the Medical College, a little bit about us. Um, we're a five hospital system in southeastern Wisconsin. 
And we have a little over, I believe, 800 beds at this point. We just opened two more units, and we are at full capacity about in a bajillion percent of the time. Um, so we are ever-growing, but we have about 1,700 providers. We have a huge community-based practice um, and, and everything else that goes along with it. And we also are an academic medical center. Along with that, I talk about Inception Health, of which I am an employee of. Um, it's owned by Freighter and the Medical College, but we are a separate LLC. Um, so it really helps us kind of drive a lot of the innovation um, that we seek to improve and optimize throughout our organization. I think that really puts us in a very unique position. I don't think a lot of health systems have that type of setup. So we're really fortunate to have, um, have it set up the way that we do today. And again, um, Inception really it was created in around 2016 to help drive innovation and collaborate with other companies um, to address healthcare problems, develop new ideas and scale solutions across our health network, which is exactly what we're doing today. A little bit more about Inception, we kind of have three areas. Uh, we have innovative operations, which really um, is, is the the area that I work in, so again, it's looking at where are opportunities, where can we solve problems, what problems are people having across the health network, and what do we implement in terms of a digital solution to help them get through those um, issues and concerns to provide a better patient experience. Uh, we also have a clinical operation platform, so that really comprises of our virtual care team, which is a group of ICU nurses. We have teleobservationists and telehospitalists. That is a 24-7 operation, and we really help support a lot of our hospitals through all of our remote monitoring services. Um, so that's also uh, located within Inception. And then we also have an investment platform. So it's really important for us having that separate budget, that separate um, support service to um, be able to invest in these companies, startups, other companies, advance the product, be able to give feedback and be able to provide something meaningful back that they're providing for us. So that's really important. And again, it, Inception Health enhances the healthcare experience by listening to consumers and delivering innovative solutions on their terms. And I'll talk about the consumer aspect in just a little bit as well. So this is my feeble attempt at binary code, <laughs> if anyone thinks that's funny. <laughs> um, but why, why get well? So has anyone heard of Avia? Avia Network, yes, a couple. Okay, so Avia is um, really an innovation, um, a group of innovators. It's about 25 to 30 health systems that come together and they say, this is the problem that we're having. What can you bring to us to help us solve that problem? So in 2016, we were at Avia talking about how we had a need to uh, bring the patient experience a little bit closer, tight-knit, standardized. How do, how do we do that? What can you provide for us at this point? Who can we turn to to help us solve this problem and uh, close that gap and in, in opportunity here? So at the time, it was Health Loop, uh, but Health Loop was introduced to us, and really it was presented as this is something that will create value, add for your patients. It will create joy in their episode of care, um, it offered us that standardized care planning. It offers us some population management opportunity, uh, those early warnings that people have been talking about with the red alerts, yellow alerts, et cetera. It really helps pull in our care team efficiency, optimizes how we care for our patient across the continuum, and spe spe specifically in that episode of care. And then additionally, we needed something that was a potential to have the opportunity to integrate with the EMR. We are an epic shop, no surprise, being in southeastern Wisconsin. Um, we were a very early adopter of epic, and we actually just went, they didn't have a foundation system. Uh, how many people are epic customers? Okay, majority. So they didn't have foundation when we went live. We were one of their very first people, and everything on our network for epic was customized. Um, that ended us into a brick wall uh, very recently because we couldn't take their updates, we couldn't take anything quarterly, we, we got a little stuck. So we recently just went back to foundation, um, but a lot of that has actually helped progress some of the integration that I'm gonna talk about today. So where are we now? So we started in 2016 and here we are at 2020, and I feel like Barbara Walters every time I say 2020, I don't know if anybody else does. Um, 
But we've got 25, and if I say care plan or loop, I, I use them interchangeably, so I don't mean to, to cause confusion with that. Um, but we've got 25 care plans live today. Um, they're all listed here in multiple areas. We have 13 different locations. Um, and this is really intriguing because a lot of the scaling and rollout that we do, I can usually get someone up um, within about a 60 to 90 day window. It just depends on where we are with our Epic integrations and our moves and our interfacing um, and how quickly we do a lot of content edits. I know um, Dr. Hughes this morning said she does a lot of content edits, we do as well. Um, just to make sure that we're providing that seamless experience for our patient, we don't wanna hand them a folder of information and then have Loop say something completely different. Um, so it's really important for us that we are making that a seamless experience regardless of how our patient is interfacing, whether it's with Loop or still on the paper um, format or maybe both. Um, so this is really unique. It's great to scale. The other benefit and really amazing thing about this is that I haven't had to really sell this. And someone on a slide the other day said, it kind of sells itself. And that is so true in our organization. I have colleagues that talk to each other. I have care team members, nurses that talk with other groups and they're like, hey, I heard about Loop, like what is it? Can I use it? And what do you have available? Um, so really the scaling opportunities that we've had throughout our organization have kind of been organic. Um, so it's, it's been great. I haven't had to do too much work, really. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> just kidding. It's been great. So um, with that, just a little bit of our utilization data. Um, we've got over 100,000 non-face-to-face visits, and you guys see these in your impact reports if you get any of those from Loop Now. Um, we've invited over 20,000 patients. We have about 89% that are extremely likely to recommend any provider in our organization. 80% um, report that avoidance of that unnecessary follow-up, office visits, phone calls, et cetera. We've managed over 5,000 clinical alerts. Um, and we really tie, if that number looks low to anyone, I don't know how many you've had in your organization or per loop or account, um, we really tie our red alerts back to um, could the patient end up in the hospital? Could it, could it bring them back in for a readmission or an admission? Um, we don't toy with red alerts too lightly. We want them to be meaningful. We want them to be something that we're looking at as part of this impact that we're measuring. And then most importantly, we have 100% of patients that are either satisfied or extremely satisfied with the use of Loop. Um, so we're really, really proud of that. So next into kind of cracking the code. So if you've ever been in a relationship where you're like, no, 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 it's not you, it's me, but you're like, really mean it? It's really, that's how we feel with, with uh, Get Well. We got to a point where we had most of our loops automated through the interface, patient gets scheduled, they get their enrollment email, they're off, it's great. We have a couple of our own complicated enough workflows that Gatwell was like, we can't, we can't help with this, we can't do this, uh, we can't automate it. So we had a couple where we still had manual um, enrollment and then you're really, you're really, really dependent heavily on the human factor. Does my nurse have time to identify the patient population that needs the loop? Does my nurse have time to put in six points of data to get them enrolled? Does my, nurse have Does my nurse have time? I don't know that they have time, and then it's on them. So if they choose not to have time, we're potentially missing out on an impact for a patient and, and creating a positive experience for them. So we still had a need for some seamless integration. Um, we were our own barrier in creating some of these more complicated workflows that I'm talking about. So we were like, how do, how do we do this? How do we make it better? It's an A, we know it's an A, and we want it to be an A plus. We just need that one little point bump, right? So with that, we've pulled in, and I don't know if anyone saw Zelf in, in the expo hall, but if you haven't spoken with them or, or you have more information after this, I would highly recommend stopping by. Um, so we've decided to partner and pull in Zelf at this point um, because there were just, again, those few that were so complicated that GetWell couldn't do it alone with us. And Zelf is another group that we had already previously partnered with with some other vendors. And really what they offer um, is an opportunity to pull the digital content from the vendor right into Epic. So instead of our nurses jumping out, 
in between Epic and the patient chart and the web-based get well, how do we bring that in together? And Zelf offer, offers us that opportunity. So there's a couple of things that I'm gonna talk about. Um, again, the opportunity here are complicated workflows. We're still doing some manual loop enrollment for our patients. Our solution to this is to automate it. How do we do that? Um, we, what we've done, and I'll speak briefly, if anyone has additional questions, I can get into the technicalities of it all, but I don't wanna bore you with it. Um, essentially what we've done is we've created five best practice advisories and they actually fire silently. So they have very specific criteria. The ones that I'm talking about are for general discharge. So we have a low risk, and this is all based on um, the EPIC readmission risk score. So we have a low risk opportunity. We have a moderate and high risk group. Um, there is a little bit of payer adjustment in there as well. Um, we also do a discharge loop for CHF and our AMI populations. And how we've driven this is to create that criteria within that BPA and it fires silently so that it's not disrupting our providers. It fires upon the signature of the um, discharge signing um, for that discharge order. And then we've also connected it to a smart data element. So the smart data element, if the, the BPA fires in the background, the smart data element triggers, it goes over to Zelf, Zelf passes it back to GetWell and says, this patient qualifies for this loop, go ahead and enroll them. So that is a very high level technical explanation for how all of that works. This is like nine months of work and 15 minutes, but um, this is really going to allow us the opportunity. I mean, we have, we have a, an enterprise care coordination nursing team right now who really has a lot of difficulty and they were the ones doing manual enrollment for these groups they had a difficult time even using reporting workbench reports to identify qualifying patients, specifically around our CHF population and our AMI. Um, some other components of that that we streamlined on the back end to help all of this was putting the DRG um, right into Epic as well. That was something that wasn't living there and it was taking us a little bit of time to get that information. Um, so there are other optimization opportunities along the way that also assisted with this. But this was one of the main um, things that we had to kind of build out to pass to Zelf to pass over to get well. So that was our first opportunity there. Our next opportunity is the fact that I talked about these separate platforms for care management. So we're going to Epic, we're going to Loop, we're going to Epic, we're hopping over to Loop. Like back and forth, depending on how many commentary or triage alerts or whatever we're getting in Loop a day. Um, really our solution to that was to bring it into the, mo the monitor view, bring it into Epic. So what we did and what Zelf helped with as well is we actually created a digital care activity tab within Epic. And when you tap on the digital care tab, it pulls GetWell's monitor view into view in the patient chart. So I will show just a little, this might be difficult, yeah. So sorry it's blurry, but this just kind of pulls into view. If you click on our digital care tab, it actually will show you if the patient is enrolled. You can see that the program is active. This is for a hip replacement loop. Um, you would click open, and then after you click open, this is what you see. So it's one-to-one -one patient. You get, this is Mr. Chuck. Um, you get Mr. Chuck's patient card and activity feed from loop directly into the EMR um, on Mr. Chuck's chart. So that really helps optimize how our nursing care team is, is managing our patients. Um, it reduces their time, it creates additional efficiency, uh, it allows us to help them work at top of license and, and continue on with other work throughout the day. It also provides a little bit more of a positive patient experience when they can have a quicker turnaround time with their um, question, you know, getting their answer, question, Questions answered, excuse me. Um, I'm still on the opportunity for separate platforms. The last piece of this that we would really like to do is connect our messaging to the Epic InBasket. So today we're getting those emails. 
um, of when to happen, when we get a red alert trigger, handoff, et cetera, any notification is coming into email, we'd like to scratch that and put it right into the in basket. We've done this previously with another vendor as well, um, seemed to work out well for that group. So a lot of our t IT work is done for this piece, but now we just need to, to pull it all together and make it seamless. Um, so we're really looking, and again, this is all with the help of Zelf. Um, so Zelf really helps kind of tie everything together and put a nice little bow on the package because it's, again, about creating that efficiency and that work efficiency and optimization for our care team as well. So going, again, nine months of work plus in 15 minutes. So if you have additional questions, let me know. But again, just kind of going over, understand that with you know, identifying your integration gaps, it may not be one size fits all. Uh, what works for us may not work for you. You may think of something different based off of what we've been talking about or have done. Um, there's been some really good lessons learned so far. I'm interested to see. We actually turn monitor view on next week. Um, so this is kind of a good segue into our go live for monitor view, but we're really excited about it. Um, and then also be open to opportunities to work with others to, com to complete your desired end state. Um, don't be afraid to grab another collaborative partner into the work that you want to do to, to achieve your goal. Um, additionally, episodic care requires frequent touch points that feel valuable to the patient. The more you can optimize and streamline what you're doing and how you're achieving it, um, the more the patient's gonna feel that seamless um, touch back as well. It creates that overall experience for the patient. Um, partner with departments, service lines, and teams that are interested in early adopters. I have uh, several people who, again, are coming to me that are interested. I'm going to grab onto them and be like, let's go, let's do it. Um, I get operations involved. I make sure we have care team um, onboarding and everyone's excited about it. It's really important to kind of leverage those people that are coming to you um, to kind of continue to scale out the work. And then also make it easy. They'll come, make it simple, uh, make it valuable. And remember that the patient is not your only consumer. We talk about the patient experience, but as a consumer, we are also servicing our providers, our nurses, our care team, our ancillary staff, anyone else that is touching the chart or touching the patient experience and working with us around all of that. Um, someone mentioned earlier today, oh, I think it was Todd in his, spe in his speech that like, Gatwell can't do what they need to do without us. And it's the same thing. Like within our own organizations, we can't do and serve the patients appropriately without our own internal staff and the people that are doing the boots on the ground work. Um, so just remember that you're, you're servicing both um, people. But with that, that is the end of mine. But again, if there's additional um, questions at the end, we'll take those. But Rob, I'll let you come up and take the floor. Just once I want to be the smartest person on the panel. Just <laughs> never happens. So great job. Thank you. Um, my name is Rob Janetten with OSF Healthcare. And we are, um, so my role is within OSF Innovation is on the external innovation side. So I go out and look for um, healthcare entrepreneurs and innovators across the country and then try to figure out how we can bring them into the, um, the OSF ministry. So we're a 14 hospital um, Catholic system spread throughout a good portion um, of Illinois. This is, uh, um, sorry, this is a, a photo of our innovation center, which um, houses my group, our ventures group, um, internal innovation, external innovation, as well as um, our simulation lab and, and a lot of other um, great resources. So, like I said, we're uh, now 14 hospitals um, across Illinois. Uh, we have a, a little hospital up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And uh, that number 14 is as of February 1st. So we just um, acquired our first hospital in uh, the Chicago metro area as well. So we've always traditionally kind of been in that uh, area between Chicago and St. Louis, which um, creates a lot of rural. Um, and uh, a lot of need to be able to communicate with patients and to be able to um, scale our resources out across um, uh, quite a, a large uh, area. So OSF Innovation, when we started to 
brand some of the innovation work we were doing um, about four or five years ago. Um, we, th we really wanted to get down like what we considered the definition of, of innovation. And so uh, we think about that as, as translating ideas about the alignment with the vision and then a very strong association with um, value and benefit to patients. So things that we're, we're doing, things that are intended to be impactful. And we see um, Loop, Health Loop, Get Well Loop um, to be definitely part of that. So part of our ecosystem, it's a um, very multidisciplinary approach um, between all of different aspects of OSF. So my partnerships group um, and a lot of other people put time and effort into these relationships and understanding how we can, how we can make them work and how we can really impact, um, impact our patients. As far as our relationship with um, Loop, it goes back quite a long way. So this is some of the um, innovation network that we have. We, we work with um, Mass Challenge out on the East Coast and then Plug and Play um, on the West Coast. And you'll see uh, Avia there in the middle. We are actually investors in Avia as well. I should um, mention that. Um, and that is how we were introduced uh, to Health Loop. And we were, uh, went through a cohort looking at what our specific needs were um, and then matching up best in class. And through our um, connections out on the West Coast, we had a lot of contact with um, uh, originally Health Loop and their uh, offices out in, in Mountain View. So our partnership, um, when we really started this, we were looking for um, solutions around procedure-based and uh, acute episodes. And um, much like Natalie said, this is, is not terribly different, but trying to figure out how are we standardizing care plans, how are we engaging patients, how are we keeping them engaged throughout the course um, of that episode, and then, you know, obviously some of the outcomes we were looking for around um, reduction in ED visits, readmissions, all of those types of things. We knew we needed tools that were going to allow and create for um, two-way communication and be able to provide patients with timely and meaningful um, communication, education, uh, and such. So this is really kind of where we were and what we were looking for. Our implementation timeline goes back to 2017. We started with um, spine surgeries, uh, quickly moved into some of our orthopedic sites, um, started then into uh, cabbage, general discharge, and then adding some more um, orthopedic sites along the way. So we don't have, um, we saw Natalie, of course, put up all of these um, great loops that they've got going. So we actually have um, a small number that we're spreading, we're trying to spread across our ministry. One of the, the lessons that I'll, I'll talk about um, when I kind of went through that ecosystem slide, one thing that wasn't on there is a new group that we've stood up in the last six months that we call St. Gabriel Digital Health. So this is really the operational infrastructure that we are now using to um, manage and scale all of our patient-facing digital assets. So we're starting to treat digital as its own asset class. We took a hospital president and uh, moved her into um, as the uh, senior vice president over St. Gabriel Digital Health and they uh, oversee all of our telemedicine, all of our um, uh, retail facing um, efforts, all of our inpatient facing efforts around EICU and, and the uh, 150 beds that they monitor, as well as all of our patient facing digital apps, uh, along with some other things. So having that infrastructure um, to really support and spread these types of things has um, really been transformational for the organization. Um, so we expect that we expect this only just, just to grow and, and most likely to grow uh, quite rapidly. Um, our loop impact to date, I'm not gonna read through all of these. You can, you can see the numbers. We've been very happy with what we've seen um, with loop from the beginning. We have um, high activation rates, what we think are high activation rates. We have patients that are satisfied with using it. Um, we have patients that are indicating that they're coming back and recommending our um, providers. 
and we are responding to lots and lots of uh, alerts and communications along the way. And um, we expect that as this, um, as the programs grow, as our support of them grow, that these numbers will um, continue and um, if not improve over time. So as, as we've gone across that timeline, we're continuing to look at integration. It's obviously um, a key piece to this growth. And um, initially, we've just kind of set up a, was a fairly basic integration for us. Um, patients are being enrolled upon um, scheduling and or discharge. And then, you know, the documentation of that loop is just coming um, back into, um, as an encounter and into the media file, a media tab. And um, that's fine. And it, and it works, but we definitely were getting feedback from our clinicians around, I'm not, I don't wanna go out to another system. We need to get, we need to get single sign-on down and we need to really kind of embed this more into um, our workflows. And, and you heard Natalie say the same thing in there. They're using Zelf for that. Um, we may get to that point eventually. Um, but for now we're um, working, as you can see here, on the linking um, as well as a single sign-on. So when our providers then go from Epic out to, um, out to Loop, that they're going right into that particular patient as opposed to just kind of a general list of everybody who may be there. So we're working on those two things. Um, as we continue to build out these integrations, we know we want to um, continue to go deeper um, with my chart, I'm, I don't see my chart going away, and so we need to figure out how to um, really integrate some of these um, patient-facing type of apps with my chart. Um, I think that there's a tendency to have these things kind of butting heads um, over time, and I, I think that's um, probably not going to get either side very far. So we're going to have to figure out how to how to integrate them and make these things get along over time. And then, um, as you can see, we want to get into the, um, the notification and, and alerting upgrades as well. So where to from here? Um, what we learned so far is, what I've learned especially, is this, this is not easy, right? I mean, we are trying to continually spread and expand. There are a lot of roadblocks and barriers on the way. And when Natalie says, it's not you, it's me, that's true, it's not you, it's me. We put those in place. I tell people all the time, like this thing, loop, it works. And it works really well. The problem is our processes that are in place to support it, both on the technical and on the workflow side, have to be good. And they have to be tight. And um, it'll work either way. But for us to really optimize it, um, we have to have our ducks in a row kind of around that entire uh, care continuum as well. So that was one thing that, that we've learned over time that part of the genesis of uh, the St. Gabriel digital health effort is to really start to um, get really good at supporting digital and working more towards becoming a digital first type of company. Um, integrate now and later, these things, they're never gonna stop. And, they're, and hopefully we never stop improving them. As soon as we get really good and we've got the best integration, someone's gonna be like, I got another great idea we could do. And, and we need to be able to support that. We need to be able to um, encourage that type of exploration. Uh, we need to be able to push um, GetWell as well as other vendors to continue to think about that as well as our clinicians. So um, we're continuing that improvement of EMR integration. Um, continuous um, monitoring of metrics. We get nowhere without them. That's the first question is show me what, yeah, we can, we can talk about putting hours into this. We can talk about putting money into it, but it's always why. Show me what, how this improves patient care. That's all we're here to do. So, um, and then the integration into the overall digital strategy, I think is really an important part. Um, too often there are people like me out there um, finding and discovering um, new ways to provide care. And if it's not brought in in a very strategic way, you can end up with um, a whole series of, of point solutions. It's one of the things that actually I've been impressed of, um, 
compressed about over the last uh, couple days is really the, the network side of GetWell and kind of what they're bringing and what they're um, continuing to build. We do have inpatient in, I think, four of our facilities and, um, and the loop deployments that you've heard, but we're really not making those two together right now. So um, it'll be interesting to see kind of where we're able to take all of that over the next several years. So that brings us to the final slide, which always says questions. So. Questions for Andrew. Um, you've had a lot of experience with Loop, so it's it's good to uh, pick your brain. <laughs> um, this session is about integration. Can you talk about where your Loop encounters show up in your Yes. <laughs> I wanted to make sure it was on first. Um, yes. So in terms of the documentation piece or still in terms of like the digital care activity that I'm speaking of. So you enroll a patient in a loop. Correct. You push education to them. Correct. Um, they send something back to you. Yep. Where does it land? Yep. So today as it stands, current state, it lands um, on the web. So like I said, we're bringing that monitor view that I was speaking of where it's going to be right in Epic in the patient chart. Um, on the digital care tab. So, you know, you have chart, re you, you said you were at Epic customer, correct? So there's chart review, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We have a digital care. So when the nurse clicks on digital care and opens up that monitor view, it'll show them that the patient is actually active on a current loop and then pulls the, so what you see today when you go to um, the GetWell website, and you see the patient card with all of their activity feed and commentary, um, that screen particularly is pulling right into Epic. Does that help explain? Correct, so the documentation, so we're literally just basically, it's almost as if, if I had a cardboard cutout of Epic in front of my face, and then I went and stood over where Rob is. So Epic cut out car. I'm really trying hard here. So give me a minute. <laughs> this, I want to so know where this is going. Just follow this is me. <laughs> but if I have just a just a cardboard cutout of Epic, and I'm Rob, and Rob is get well on the on the web, okay. All we are literally doing is taking Rob and pulling him into the cardboard frame. Does that help? But so it's not an encounter, it's not an episode, correct. it's not on a flow sheet, it's not you in, got it, in correct. anything that is epic-y, it's just correct. Yeah, so a picture. Correct, yep, it's literally just pulling that and, and putting it in front of your face in epic. Um, what we do today, and I don't know, maybe many people do this, but we, we do take a PDF screenshot nightly of all of the documentation and dump it into our media, dump it. The media is a dumping ground, I'm sorry. Yeah. But um, we, we put it into the <coughs> media tab. Those are um, considered part of our legal health record. We did just make some recent updates based on some other things that it needed, which was great. But um, it actually is encounter level because of the way that we are auto-enrolling our patients. That enrollment is actually attached back to an encounter based on the scheduled um, procedure. So what's the document type? We call it, it so it's, it's literally just a PDF snapshot. We call it a, well, it's the wrong name still, but um, we, it, we named the document um, Health Loop Summary, which I, we're changing to get well. But um, that, so does that help? Mm -hmm. I can give you way more information. Like if, if you want to connect with me, I, I can send you screenshots too of what we, what we do. But hopefully that helps. You're welcome. My poor analogy making, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, I try. Yeah, I tracked, it makes sense, but that brings me to my next question. What are the staff doing with that? Yes, they can see that the patient's enrolled and maybe that they've activated and they've engaged to some degree, but what are the clinical staff expected to do with that knowledge base? 
So it, exactly what they would be doing today if they were going to the web. So if they get a notification, um, and this is where that second phase of tying the, the in-basket in is really going to reduce anything jumping outside of Epic. I think we're going to be in a little bit of a hybrid state until we get full integration into the in-basket as well with those messages. But the same expectations would lie. So um, say we are fully integrated, we're, we're past that point, we get the commentary, it falls into a folder in the in-basket. The nurse is looking at that digital care folder, seeing the comment from the patient, hopping right into the chart and managing the patient right there inside the patient's chart on loop. So it's fully, so it's not only a picture, but it's full service. You can still click, comment, handoff, internal note, all of the functionality that exists, exists within Epic. You can manage everything on loop within Epic. Does that help? So it's fully, fun it's not just the picture, it's fully functional. I was gonna say, so it's dynamic. You can still Correct. click and play with it. It's not just a picture. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Sorry if I made that seem that way. No, good clarification. Thank you. Um, I just have a question both of you can respond on it regarding the red alerts from Loop. Uh, is what triggers the red alert that um, who and who is notified with that alert in terms of uh, you know dissemination of the message and what is triggered after that? Because you said you guys take it seriously and to a point from what I got from it, it's it's somewhat rated if it's going to help, it's going to cause a patient a readmission or admission. So how does that process go? Yeah, so I don't, and you can answer too, but um, today our nursing care teams for each department and area manage all of our red alerts. So the red alert is based on the care plan content and what we've actually tied um, to the patient answering a question. So for instance, in our colonoscopy care, care plan, if they get the question that is asking, I could have used something less graphic, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Healthcare. Bad. Um, yeah, right. L thank God we're not eating snacks. But, um, you know, but there's a, there's a question, maybe a day or two post procedure for that, that says, are you having any um, blood in the stool or anything like that? If they say yes, so we have the power to indicate whether or not if they say no, it's no big deal. If they say yes, we need a red alert on that because we want to connect with that patient immediately. Um, so that so it's all based on the care plan content. It lines it all out nicely and says, if this, then red alert me. Um, so that red alert notification goes to our nursing care team who then manages that red alert and, and however that's appropriate. Whether they monitor the patient, whether they reach out to the patient via loop, um, whether they pick up the phone and monitor the patient in that fashion or bring the patient in or give them additional clinical advice, et cetera. So that's, it's the same, um, and again, in terms of how we bring this into Epic, into the monitor view, same, uh, same rules apply for how we manage those patients. Um, the other thing is we've, we've kind of tied some of our red alerts into our um, return on investment that we look at from a financial perspective. So that's another reason why we focus so heavily on making the red alerts truly red. Does that help? And Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, for us, it's one of my favorite answers is it's, it depends. And um, part of that is, is what the module is and then what is the support infrastructure that we have in that area. We have some, and, and we're not really consistent uh, yet across um, across our ministry and how we're handling that. So I think as St. Gabriel starts to stand up and really um, take some of this over, we have some of our ortho offices where they want to be monitoring that dashboard. Um, they know those patients. Please don't talk to my patients, that type of thing. We have others who said, um, please talk to my patients. I don't have time to do that. Um, and then those, it, it kind of works both ways. And it's really good service either, either way that we're able to set that up. Um, but typically for those that are not in the office, they're just communicating back to those care teams via Epic and Basket um, and allowing them to uh, react to that information as they normally would. So when you have a patient who's communicated that their knee is red and fussy, then you might want to reach out to them. And um, so getting that back through the Epic and Basket is our typical workflow. 
time. Um, thank you guys so much. You did an awesome job. And just as a reminder, we have our closing celebration downstairs in the Regency Ballroom, if you guys would all like to join us there. Thank you.